Welcome to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School, where we explore all kinds of things, stories about quilting, tools, field trips, maybe some famous quilters stop by, and of course, a little bit of copyright thrown in just for fun. I'm Elizabeth Townsend Gard, I'm a law professor, and I just want a quilt. Today we're talking to Hollis Turnbow. He is a legend. He has been in the quilting industry for a very long time, and he talks to us about all kinds of things. Um, he's delightful. We had lots to talk about. We think we may have to do a second session. It was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy it. This is going to be a podcast. Is that okay? Yes. Awesome. Well, what we're going to do is um, thank you again for being willing to chat. I'm very excited about that. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is um, I'm going to ask you some questions and we're going to start with a super easy one and then whatever you want to answer, you can. And if you want to take it in a certain direction, we can do that as well. Does that sound good? Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. hold on. Uh Okay, so the first thing I'm going to ask you is tell me who you are and where are you? Where are we talking? Where are you today? What 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 part of the country are you in today? I'm I'm Hollis Turnbow, and I'm in Sturbridge, Massachusetts. And uh, I imagine it's cold up there. Is it cold today? It is very cold. Uh, was uh, something like ten degree below zero this morning. Oh, but it gosh. has warmed up a little bit, and the sun is shining. That is very cold. I'm here in New Orleans, and we're we're all we're all feeling super cold. And I think it's probably forty. Forties. <laughs> so. uh, that's a heat wave down there. So <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. Well, again, thank you for joining us today. Um, the first question I'm going to ask you is: What's your first memory of someone sewing or quilting in your life? Well, probably uh, as a small child, uh, even before school, my two unmarried aunts and grandmother who lived out on the farm had a quilt hanging from the ceiling every winter time to be quilted during the winter. And very much like the scene in the movie, The American Quilt, I played under the quilt as I was a child. Uh, of course, I was not tall enough to see the top side, but I did see the bottom side. So that was really the first. And of course, that continued through, oh, you know, as long as I can remember. Always in the winter, there was a quilt hanging from the ceiling uh, to be quilted. That's really interesting. Um, and what what did the quilts look like? What kind of quilts were they doing? Do you remember? Well, back in those days, and this was in the 1930s and early 1940s, they were quilts made for the bed and uh, very simple patterns, nothing fancy. They didn't they didn't do fancy quilts. So it was uh, they were utilitarian quilts. Uh, I remember my aunts had two. Uh, two patterns that they used uh, frequently. One was a pineapple, and, and the other was just uh, simple shapes. And then in later life, they made a lot of quilts just with triangles, uh, with no specific pattern. So they, you know, back earlier, they didn't do quilts for show or for state or county fairs, yeah. but they were all to cover with at night. Interesting. And were they all hand? Were they were they hand pieced as well? They were uh, hand pieced and and sometimes machine pieced, and then hand quilted. Interesting. Uh, although it was interesting because my grandmother, and this was again in the nineteen thirties, nineteen forties, she did machine quilt some on an old treadle sewing machine. And what she would do is she would quilt usually diagonally in one direction on the sewing machine and then take it off and quilt it by hand in the other direction. Oh, and before my, before my last aunt died, I asked her why my grandmother did that. And she said, well, 
because they needed a lot of quills. And by doing it by machine first, that technically basted the quilt. Interesting. And then they did the other direction by hand, and I still have one or two that uh, she did that way. And do you, have you come across others doing that similar thing? I'm sitting here, didn't hear you. Yeah, have you come across others that did a similar thing with half? No, machine, I've, half? Ne- I've never seen much of it done again. Usually, the the early machine quilts that I see were probably done all on the machine, uh, a treadle sewing machine. Interesting. But uh, she's the only one that I ever knew, or ever saw that that did the the t- in the. Interesting. Uh, we lost you. Can you hear me? Hello. Hi. I lost you for just a second. All right. We're back. Let's check. And oh, see. you're there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Did yeah, you lose yeah, me yeah. too? Yeah. Okay. So when did you start quilting? How did you get involved in quilting? Well, I have to tell you a little bit, bit of background first. I grew up in a house full of of quilters and needle workers, and I had aunts uh, that actually sewed uh, for the public back in, uh, you know, the late 30s and early 40s. Uh, I was the only boy in a large family, and, and I always say that when you're around uh, people like that all the time, you, you just learn things that you don't know you learn. So I grew up able to do needlework uh, of a sort. But it really didn't get seriously involved in quilting until before the bicentennial. And um, because there was a lot of interest in uh, going back to the old needleworks, I was teaching needlework as art for a local rec department. Uh, I lived in uh, Maryland at the time, east of Washington, D.C., and was it, it was more of an art uh, rather than embroidering cup towels. I also had been uh, uh, interested in a, in a wall hanging that I saw that was done in very free form uh, uh, embroidery work. It was not cruel, but it was using uh, the same stitch and in, 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 in to see what different textures of thread would do. So I took a class at the Smithsonian on uh, creative needlework and just fell in love with with the use of the the, the yarns, the textures. So then I started teaching uh, needlework uh, before the bicentennial for a local rec department. So one day I get a call from the director saying, do you know anything about quilting? And I said, yes. Now, you have to understand she didn't ask me if I could do it. She asked me if I knew anything about it. Because after all, I played under the quilt, and, and I knew how to stitch so that took me into a seriously uh, uh, pursuing quilting. So I started, again, teaching that uh, very basically. And back in the mid-'70s, a man who quilts was quite an oddity. Yeah. We had read about husbands who had threaded their wives' needles but had never admitted to doing quilting. So at that time, there were about five of us in the country that, that gained some attention. And I started teaching seriously then, uh, uh, you know, quilt making because it, the revival started in the in the late seventies. So that's what got me started. That's really interesting. So, what was it like to be uh, one of the few men quilting at that time? Well, I think that that because there were few of us, uh, we were readily accepted. Uh, there was no, uh, you know, f- feeling uh, of resistance about it. And so we were quite uh, accepted, I think, maybe because we were an oddity. Now, I know later uh, I hear a lot of stories about men who go into quilt shops and ask if they're there to buy something for their wives who are there, the quilters themselves. So I didn't find any uh, any uh, resistance uh, at that time. And then never, you know, throughout my whole career since then, because I did develop some reputation, you know, in that. Yeah. 
Yeah, interesting. So what was it that you liked about quilting? What part did what, what type of quilting did you like to do? All types or certain types? Well, in the beginning, I taught basic. Uh, you know, we did nine patch, and then we expanded into the, to the other shapes uh, that that were, uh, you know, used in quilt making. And I still have a a great love for the need for very basic work. But then I, because I was going around, my, my daughter at the stencil company had organized her company in about 1983. And I retired from my job uh, three or four years later, and I hit the road uh, as a vendor for her. So I started meeting uh, a lot of not only quilters, but also manufacturers, which led into uh, a lot of other activities. For instance, I in the past uh, served as a quilting consultant to thread manufacturers, uh, fabric manufacturers. And I think the the reason is that I was out on the field uh, talking to quilters, knowing what they were wanted, and I could bring that information back. But I think the, the real turning point in what I did or do came in the early 1990s when um, – I was at a quilt show and there was a manufacturer next to my booth who sold wide fabric, uh, oh, well, primarily for backing or curtains. And so they asked me one day if it was possible to print a large design on a single piece of fabric to be quilted. And I said, sure, you can do that if you have the technology. And they said they did. And so that started into what I quite well known about now is designing the whole cloth quilt style. And uh, I went out and found uh, a couple of people who were well known and uh, the company actually bought the designs from them. But then in copying those designs, I really learned how to draw. I, I'd never really taken drawing classes. I started drawing and then designing, uh, you know, more original work in whole cloth, which that project, uh, that product is still going. So, and also because my daughter sold quilting stencils, I concentrated a lot on, on the quilting design that the motif design this quilted into the quilt and have done a lot of uh, designing with stencils for her and have continued to do the, the whole cloth design since then. How do you approach designing a stencil or whole cloth? Do you, can you take me through sort of what the process is for designing something? Okay, first I tell students that uh, they, they all have done it. Uh, and they have to remember when they were children, they cut paper snowflakes. And you have to look at a design and decide what its smallest complete unit is and then start repeating that. I see all kinds of shapes uh, out in architecture, uh, mosaics, uh, newspapers, the filigree around ads in newspapers, which gives you an idea for the uh, the backbone or the basic bone of uh, of any kind of a design. With stencils, a lot of the times it's again breaking it down to its smallest unit, which usually is either one fourth of the design or maybe even one eighth of the design. Fold the paper, trace it on the other side, and then repeat that around. So I try to tell people that you don't have to have a, a master's degree in graphic design to be able to do this. It's, it's just looking at it, thinking about its, simple, its, its simplest unit. It's the mirror image of it is what it is, and you only have to do a very small part of the design, and suddenly you have, have the whole. When I design a whole cloth for queen-size beds, I draw it by hand, full size, because wow. I don't trust I don't trust the technique uh, technology to be able to enlarge.